Hi everyone, a quick refresher on while loops and for loops in Python. Uh, while loops and for loops are used to do iteration, which is the process of repeatedly performing some sort of operation. And it's important to know where these two styles of loops are most appropriate. Um, they are interchangeable and you can do the same thing with both of them. Um, but one is just built, for, they're built for different things. The while loop is built for when you need to loop until a condition is met. So you want to do things over and over until something tells you to stop. So for example in this uh, this little while loop here, we're going to loop until x is, until this condition here which we call the loop condition until this thing is false. So the while loop, all, this block of code, keeps going until this becomes false, right? So when we start out with x gets 2, uh, x is 2, which is less than 10, so it proceeds in the loop, x gets x times 2, so x will take on the value 4, we'll print out that 4, we'll come back up to the beginning of the loop. Is 4 less than 10? Yes double the size of x, print it out, 8, 8 less than 10, yes, okay, double it to 16, print it again, 16 less than 10, no, we stop immediately and kind of go to whatever's down here. That's a while loop, looping until whatever the loop condition is met. The other style is for loops. For loops are more appropriate for when you have a list or a sequence which, and strings are sequences, so are tuples and some other things, and you want to do something to each item in that list. Colloquially, we would call that a for each loop, right? So you want to do something to every item in a list, or when you want to do something a certain number of times. Okay, so that's kind of the distinction between when you want to use a while loop, when you want to use a for loop. Um, I'm going to switch over to the code and just illustrate a couple of other things. Uh, let me grab this code here. I'm going to switch over to PyCharm in a file that I'm working in and paste in this code. Right. So if we run this, uh, we can see the output down here. It prints out 4 um, because it prints after doubling it. 4, 8, 16. It prints and then it checks that condition and then it's done. In fact, let me just add a little statement here, it says done. Okay, so uh, one note about while loops. This stop condition, what Python is doing is it's checking, is this true? If it is true, do this stuff. If it's false, stop and go down here. Okay? This condition can be complex. Uh, we can do more with it. Right, so let me change this to while x is less than a thousand, just for the heck of it. Um, now this thing's going to print a lot more, right? Multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. Um, but we can make this condition complex. In other words, we can have more than one condition. Uh, so let me have another condition where I've got y is equal to five, and inside my loop, what I'm going to do is subtract one from five every time I go through the loop. So it'll go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and beyond actually at this point. But now I'm going to include y in my condition, right? So now I've got this kind of complex condition here. If it makes you feel comfortable, you can put some parentheses around this. You don't need them. Um, and now, so basically what this loop is going to do is it's going to loop until this thing is as long as this thing is x is less than a thousand and y is greater than zero. Another way of looking at that is this loop will stop when x is greater than or equal to zero, one thousand, or y is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so y is going down by one every time. So this ought to go, regardless of how big I make this number, only five times. One, two, three, four, five. Because the y side of this is evaluating. It's coming up false before the x side of it is as well. 
Okay. So, uh, one more thing. Let me switch back over here. Um, let me grab the for loops out of my code. And I'll paste them in. And you can stop here uh, and pause the video, copy this stuff in if you need it. Um, couple, one little trick I want to show you here. So if we run this, um, still getting my while loop output. Let me comment this out just so it's not printing my while loops anymore. Uh, let me print out the first for loop. So dogs is a list of strings, chow, poodle, corgi, for i in dogs, print i. What's happening for this is it does for each element in this list of dogs, i will take on the value of the first item, the second item, the third item, okay, and print it out, all right? Um, so that's what's going on there. I can also do this another way, which if you're coming from Java land, uh, yeah, say hi to my wife in the background. If you're coming from Java land, this is a loop where you're kind of looping over a number. Here, I'm saying, hey, for i in the range, up to length of dogs. Oh my gosh, what's length of dogs? Well, the length is three, okay? The value of range of three, let's print that out, is the range from zero to three exclusive of the three. So when I print out i here, i is gonna take on the value zero, one, two. And then, huh, what is going on here? Something a little bizarro happened. Here we go. Um, zero, the zeroth thing i in the dogs list is the chow. Woo! Playing connect the dots here. The first indexed item is poodle. Okay. The second indexed item is corgi. Right. So, you know, this is looping over things using indices of lists. Sometimes this is useful. Sometimes it's not. Um, it may come up again. Right. But just be aware of that there are a couple of different modes for looping using for loops. Know what for loops versus while loops are good for. I want to show you one more trick here. All right, for i in dogs, chow, pooty, poodle, corgi. You see that this goes left to right. It goes in sequence from zero, one, two. Okay. We can do it backwards with a little magic. Right? If we do this, for i in reversed dogs, what reverse does is it's going to give me back a list in reverse order. So instead of chow, poodle, corgi, I should get corgi, poodle, corgi, poodle, chow. Okay. Kind of neat. Sometimes you want to go backwards. There are benefits to that. There's another way to do it that's even more cool looking. You, know, you can show your friends this say, oh, you're elite hacker, right? Just a little syntactic sugar. Whew, what in the world is that? Uh, well, it has the same effect. Corgi, poodle, chow, going backward. Um, this is a slice. This is called a slice of the list. I don't expect you to know it, but if you want to impress your friends, use this. It's exactly the same thing as uh, reversed. Okay, that's it for while and for loops. Brush up on them uh, from your 131 notes. We will be looping a lot in this class. You got to be comfortable with them.